Welcome to Modes Made Easy. Uh, we are in the fifth week and we are talking about basically minor progressions. And last week we had maybe one of the most interactive small groups I've ever seen. We, uh, we were getting chord progressions left and right and we were, we were evaluating them and we were, we were talking about how to treat them when it came to uh, the modes, the major modes, that's what we were talking about last week. And this week we're going to be focusing on the minor modes, so Dorian, Aeolian, and Phrygian. But I'm not going to lie, it's going to be mostly about Dorian, because Dorian is by far the most musical minor mode that's not straight minor. Aeolian is straight minor. So we're going to talk a lot about Dorian tonight. We're going to talk about the other ones, but we're going to talk a lot about Dorian. Um, but before I get into stuff, Let's, um, let's look, let's, I'm going to make an, an invitation here. We had quite a few people who were posting chord progressions last week of songs that they were listening to or backing tracks or whatever. And we were taking a look at those progressions and we were making modal decisions based on the chord progressions. So start getting them in. <clears throat> start getting the modal chord progressions, start getting whatever chord progressions in. Let's, I mean, if you have one that's major, fine, but uh, the theme tonight is minor chord progressions, basically minor chord progressions. So while we're going over the chart uh, here and talking about, we're going to start with uh, Aeolian, go ahead and get those chord progressions in and we'll start taking a look. But uh, let's go ahead and pull up the, the key transposition chart. <clears throat> All right, so our minor modes <clears throat> are based off of two, three, and six of the major scale harmony. If, that, if what I just said doesn't make sense, you have to go back and watch the first couple weeks of Modes Made Easy. That's going to help you make sense of some of this stuff. But if we look at, uh, in this case, D, e, D minor, E minor, and A minor, those would be the minor the notes that the minor modes of this, the, the major scale would be based off of. So two would be Dorian, three would be Phrygian, six would be Aeolian. We're going to build an Aeolian harmony here. So we're going to look at A minor as the one. If A minor is the one, we're in the key of C, parent key of C. If A minor is the one, that means we have B minor as two, C is three. Do you want to avoid? Do you want to avoid the diminished? And you want to avoid? Uh, you want to avoid the 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 parent key chord as well. So we have. We want to sort of avoid two and three from the minor scale if we can. We have uh, the four as minor D minor, the five as minor E minor. The six and seven are major. Now, this is a pretty common thing to hear in a, in a straight Aeolian chord progression. We might hear something like this. F. A minor. So we've got one, four major, five major, or er, sorry, one, six major, seven major, one. You're also going to notice your standard 1, 4, 5s in minor, Aeolian. You might also notice, even though you want to avoid your parent, uh, your parent key chord, you might see something like this.
So the C is positioned in a way where you land on it, but you're leading back to the to our one, which is our minor, which is our our Aeolian sound. So that's that's good. To, it's it's sort of how you phrase things that makes that going back to the parent key chord okay. Listen. So your typical minor progressions that you're going to hear that stick to straight Aeolian harmony, which would be major scale harmony, would be minor one, major six, major seven to one. And then you're going to hear one, four, five, happening quite a bit. Now, in that progression that I just played earlier, we had one, four, seven. Three. And we walk down like that. One, four, seven, three, that's very much centered around the A minor. So I wouldn't call that a C major progression at all, because it's really landing on the on the minor. But when you're playing modally, and when you have these chord progressions that are modal, what makes them modal is their, their reliance on the, their tonal center. If, if, you're, if you are in the tonal center and your tonal center happens to be your parent key, you're not playing modally. If your tonal center is something other than the parent key, you are playing modally. Any questions or any chord progressions before we move on to Dorian? I've uh, got a question here from BVLZ. Okay. Uh, when we talk about basically major or basically minor progressions, what determines it? Is it the first chord in a progression or the chord based on the root? It is the, the chord that we're calling the one. If the chord that we're calling the one is minor, then we're calling it a basically minor chord progression. That's how we're delineating it. It is not what parent key we're in, because uh, as I just said, your tonal center when you're playing modally is going to be different than your parent key. So what determines a basically major or basically minor chord progression is what we're calling the one. In major scale harmony, is the one minor or is the one major? If the one is minor, it's going to be a basically minor progression because our one is minor. Okay, and here is a progression Okay, from Mr. Metalhead. Here's a uh, chord progression for you in E Phrygian, C major 7, B minor 7 flat 5, D minor 7, A minor 7, and G7. Okay, so we've got... Seven. That is an E Phrygian. Mm -hmm. 
This is not an E Phrygian. This is a straight C major chord progression. Yeah, this is straight C major. Let's go back to the, uh, the key transposition ch table. We've got C major seven, clearly our one. Then we've got B minor, uh, B minor seven flat five, which if it's a flat five chord, it plays the role, especially in B, it plays the role to be diminished. Uh, actually, technically, there. That would be actually a B minor seven flat five. Uh, then we've got uh, D minor 7, which is the 2, and we've got an A minor 7, which is the 6, and then a 5 chord, back to the 1. That's a fun one, though. Um, I like the use of the, the minor seven flat five. I'm gonna um, boot up my logic here, and we'll record it. I don't know if this tempo is going to be good or... We'll slow it down a little here. Left over from last week. Forevermore. I think I looped that right. Why not a minute? So C We're in C <clears throat> um, but we've got this got this nice uh, this nice flat five in there. You really 
bluesy with that. Especially since we've got so many minor chords in there. Good progression. Straight major. I like it. Now, he has a follow-up to that. Yeah. Um, let me get that one up here. What if E minor 7 is the 1? Then does it become Phrygian? But there's no E minor 7 in the chord progression. I think he's adding that. To the progression. I see. Uh, let's let's uh, see if we if we swap out um, if we can make to answer to your question if we can make the E minor seven feel like one then yes. So if we have if we had something like uh, So this one, this G7, is gonna is gonna want to go here. So if we did something like could do uh Let's see if we can make that work. I kind of like that. So if we have, this is gonna, might take me a second. Three, four. Loop, loop, loop. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're we're just gonna play around E Phrygian. 
and see if we can see if we can make some sort of melody sense out of this. <laughs> I think that works. It, it because we played it with C first. It always sounds like it, it's it's just begging to go here with that G five. But I think maybe if we hadn't done that one first, um, yeah, I think that works as E Phrygian. That's a, that's a very good chord progression. Um, very good. Good job. Got a few more questions. If yeah. you mm -hmm. okay, here we go. Um, this one's from <coughs> Guitar Raja. I was wondering, is there a better way of memorizing scales other than committing patterns to memory? Well, so there's memorizing them, and then there's applying them and being musical with them. And no, there's not really a better way to memorize them than just to, just to practice them and get them in your muscle memory. But I would spend less time drilling them and more time being musical with them, playing over backing tracks, exploring what scales do for you. I just got done doing a series, a full 20 lesson series on, on practicing pentatonic scales. And rather than drilling them, I decided to create different musical contexts for people to practice improvising using each individual pattern by themselves. And uh, just in, in my discovery of going through the course material that I prepared, I'm realizing how valuable that is. Get familiar with a scale pattern and then make it, uh, make it musical. Make it musical as soon as possible. Okay, here's one from Callum. Hi, Chris. I'm working on a song at the moment, and the progression is as follows. E minor, A, E minor, E minor, A, D, so on and so forth. Uh, eight bars in 6-8 time. Is this E Dorian. A minor, or A to E minor. No, uh, this would not be Dorian because A feels like the one. You know, one. Then you start with A. 
Um, if you were to switch it so that it was E minor, if E minor felt like it was the one, so if we were to do this, And I think I think actually it maybe E minor is the one that oh, starts I'm, I'm up not on the, seeing, the oh. line above the yes the I is. completely ignored that so yes let, let me let me completely forget what I just said is this E Dorian uh, one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six one six one two three four five six one two Yes, this is E Dorian. One, two, three, because we've got the one with the major four. I wonder if this thing will do six, eight. Yes, it will. Let me delete these. And we will record this one. Uh, it might be a little fast, maybe for what you guys were, or what you were doing. Maybe, maybe it's right. So. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's a, that's a nice chord progression in the way it moves. It's 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 different sounding. It's um, since the chords move a lot, you almost want to be uh, a little bit more reserved in in what you play over it. That's a great chord progression. E Dorian, great job. I got some more coming in. Can yeah, keep taking them. That's okay. what this is all about. Uh, this one's from R Badu. I am wondering how the one three five seven in the minor chord progression would sound like using A minor. I'm guessing it would work in the Aeolian mode. One three five seven chords or the one three five seven like an arpeggio or a wondering how the one three one three five to seven. Maybe because of the period. 
So like, let's go back to our key transposition table. So we have one to three. Uh, if we're in if we're in A minor, I suppose, yeah. One to three to five to seven one. Three, one, three. Oh, and then I'm sorry, I'm making a mistake. Seven would be G. What was the? It was one, three, five, seven. What was the? What were we doing? Five. No, five would be E. One, three. Yeah, there you go. I like that a lot. He did confirm. Yes, the it was the chords. Yeah, so, yeah, yes. Yeah, that's a that's a straight Aeolian progression. Let's go back to four four here. Uh, we want a chord here. Intro letter. Two, three, four.
Good one. Okay, and then a question from Guitar Raja again here. Yeah. Uh, does Dorian work over any one, four, five blues, major or minor? Very good question. It does, as long as you are conscious of the minor third. I just got done teaching a lesson on this, actually. Um, I wonder, hold on. I'm going to pull up a blues backing track. Uh, just a second here, see if I can get one pulled up here. I hadn't, hadn't planned on this, but let's see here. Give me a sec, because I think this is a good this is a good question. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay, so this is that's clearly a seven chord there. Here's your natural six. So that is pure Dorian right there. I'm using that minor third. and that major sixth, but you're missing a piece. It does work and it sounds pretty darn good, but this is where modes are so cool and I'm so glad you brought this up. This was actually in week seven or something, but that's okay, we'll do it again then. When you're playing a blues and it's based around dominant chords, you can use Dorian or Mixolydian. And what that does is it brings us we, so Dorian is a minor scale with a natural six. So we have one, two, flat three, four, five, natural six, seven, one. Uh, if you were to look at it in terms of the major scale, we have a flat three and a flat seven, right? So Dorian is a major scale with a flat three and a flat seven. Mixolydian is a major scale with a flat seven. So if you use Dorian and Mixolydian together, you have one, two, flat three, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So we have, we have uh, uh, this, uh, one, two, or sorry. We have that sound, which means we have this and this. Listen to that over the track. If I play with this, the major and minor third, with the natural sixth and then and then a flat seven, money. It sounds great. Woo.
Minor, major, minor, major, minor. So I hope, are you guys hearing the, the balance or the, the playing, playing with that major and the minor third? It is so cool. It is so cool. Oh, if you're hearing it, it's cool. If you're not hearing it, I, I failed and it's not cool. We've got one more question if you want to take it real quick. Yeah. From Mr. Metalhead, and I, I, I need, I need to, to know if people are hearing that, that discrepancy, that discrepancy, that, that beautifulness uh, between the major and the minor third, the Dorian or Mixolydian over a dominant blues progression. All right, you heard him, folks. Chime in with your answers there. Uh, this one is in Phrygian dominant. How would you apply diminished lines only over the three and the five chord? I am probably not qualified to answer that question because I'm I have not I have not um, drilled and and become extremely familiar with how to make Phrygian dominant musical. Um, Marcello, who is he does live Q and A every week, would be a fabulous person to ask that question to. In fact, he does it right before this course every week. So. Yeah, he would be able to answer that question well. Yes, people are hearing the uh, hearing the convolution of those two. Cool. Two modes. Yeah, that's one of the coolest modal tricks, I think, that's out there. When you when you combine the perspectives of both Dorian and Mixolydian, because you have that flat seven, which is staple of that dominant. And then you're constantly playing with that that major minor thing. It's really, really a cool sound. All right. Okay, I think we're caught up for the moment. Okay. Well, keep the chord progressions coming. That's what this week's all about. We've talked about Dorian. We've talked about Phrygian. You guys have given uh, ex extremely good examples of every single chord progression. And we've recorded them. We've done, we've done everything I've wanted to do. And you guys drove it, which is just fabulous. Um, let me check my notes here. There we have it. Give me some more chord progressions. I can make it my own, but it's way more fun to have you guys submit them. We'll go for a couple other a couple more minutes, and if there aren't any other progressions, then we'll pick up next week. Next week, though, um, we get back into, we're calling it Two Ways to Think, and we're going to be talking more about the parent key versus the tonic, and we're going to be talking about how we approach that from a scale pattern perspective. You can see when I'm improvising, I'm, I'm going kind of everywhere. I'm using some pentatonic, uh, shapes with modal notes inserted, and I'm using three hundred string scales, uh, and I'm, I'm focusing on those key tones, and I'm going to go over my mindset when I'm traveling the neck, because um, I go back and forth quite a bit between, ah, parent key and, ah, um, tonal center in this particular mode. The parent key is sort of the navigational sort of side of things, and the thinking in the specific mode uh, is a way to make sure that I'm I'm hitting those key tones and and being being appropriate for the mode and we'll we'll talk much more about that and we'll demonstrate that ad nauseum next week. No. Still waiting here. Uh, and then the following week we start a uh, a series a mini series within the series real music and modes. Then from mode to mode and quick on your feet, we're going to take one track and we're going to explore how the chord progression, how that in the different sections of the song suggest different modes. And this is very common in songs, not just progressive rock, but in popular, in just regular popular music, it's very common. So we're going to dissect this track. 
we're going to dissect it transition at a time and look at different ways that we can, we can approach it. So I'm excited to do that with you. Well, if there are no other progressions, guys, thank you so much, so much for your interaction. Um, like I said, next week we're going to be getting back to discussing the parent key uh, and navigating with three on the string scales versus targeting those key tones within each mode. It'll be a good week next week. Put your thinking caps on because it'll be a lot of applied theory. We've talked about the theory already. Now we're going to be applying it a little bit more. I look forward to it. We'll see you next week.